Our next topic tonight is talking on feed costs and some rations for backgrounding calves. And um, there's always a lot to talk about when it comes to developing rations for cattle and how that fits in for backgrounding. And there's just a, a wealth of things to uh, talk about, but again, we're limited tonight for how far we can go. But let's just cover a few things. If you look over the past six years, you can kind of see feed prices, whether it be co-products or pure grain, well, uh, all kind of follow each other. And uh, about a year ago, things kind of migrated apart quite a bit. And if you look recently, and it, this is actually today's prices when it comes to corn and wheat mids and distillage grains, Corn's around, I think, 230 a ton. Uh, wheat mids around 250 a ton. Distillers 250, 255 a ton. Uh, some pretty expensive feeds that we have out there. Um, it's a whole different world. It's just more expensive. But the two kind of go together. And that's where I come up and say, you know, in reality, when we're feeding calves, we try to get weight on cattle. It's all a matter of energy. And our leader out there in producing energy for livestock is corn. And corn. The amount of uh, starch and, and that it presents, provides, um, that price really uh, sets the tone for all the rest of our feeds that are out there. Quick lesson in nutrition. Again, we need energy to grow livestock. It can either come from starch or it can come from cellulose since cattle are ruminant animals and they can digest cellulose. So whether it be grain or hay, cattle need that for their energy. Then, of course, you need enough protein to allow them to digest the energy. And obviously, we need vitamins and minerals because we've been sold in that for years. And yes, we do need vitamins and minerals. And if you're short on those, you will suffer your performance. Also, good quality water is needed, too. But the main thing is, as you increase the energy density of your ration, you'll increase the gain in the cattle. So, I'd like I try to highlight again, more energy, more growth, more starch in the ration usually leads to more growth. More digestible fiber in the ration will lead to more growth. How do you measure energy in a ration? Really there's two different ways that we normally go about it. One is to use the terms called total digestible nutrients. It's measured in pounds. Or the other one is to use the net energy system where they talk about NEM or NEG and that's really referred to in megacals per pound. If you're kind of old school like me, we still talk TDN because it's easy to understand and go. Um, most feed yards talk about net energy, and we'll have a few of those listed here later on, too. If I can ring throw one thing tonight, that's figuring your energy cost for the feeds, and this is how you calculate the cost per pound of TDN for a feed. You take the $235 for corn, that's what six uh, something a bushel is um, for corn right now, 235 a ton. So you take 235 divided by 2,000 pounds, you come up with 11.75 cents. Divide that by the percent of TDN in the ration, and you come up with 13 cents. Divide that by the dry matter, so you're always comparing things on a dry matter basis, and you come up with the price of energy for corn at 14 point, well, 14 cents, point, almost 15 cents. Do the math to compare things. Um, here's our feed prices that I went through. I guess it was 6.58 per bushel for corn. TDN kind of corn is 88. That's on a dry matter basis. Those can all change depending upon how you put your hay up or how you got your corn or what type of corns you have. If it's really heavyweight corn, it might be up to 90% TDN. might be less than that depending upon how things are working. Um, there's the other can. Yeah, he's just, this one. Yeah, just grab one of those. Um, let's see. Grass hay, that's all over the board. If you're dealing with some CRP hay, uh, I've tested some recently that's down around 44 to 46% TDN, uh, pretty low quality stuff. Uh, if it was cut early and green, um, it could be quite a bit higher than even 52. And um, Wheat mids are 83% TDN, barley malt sprouts a little less, corn silage, pretty high price stuff at $70 a ton, let's figure 72% TDN. Of course, canola meal is a protein source, $300 a ton is the current price for that. Energy-wise, it doesn't supply a lot of energy, but it does provide a substantial amount of protein. Well, let's do some math here when it comes to doing feed costs. I just got four values up there, one for canola meal, one for wheat mids, one for corn, another for dried, dried distillers grains, not wet. Dry matter, crude protein, TDN, cost per ton, you can see what's listed across the top. If you kind of study that thing, you see the cost per ton for canola meal is $300 a ton. 
Cost per pound is 15 cents. Cost per pound of crude protein is 38 cents. But here's my deal. Cost per pound of energy is 24 cents. Look at wheat mids. Cost per pound of energy for wheat mids is 16 cents. Corn is cheaper than wheat mids for cost of energy right now. Unless you've got corn, wheat mids priced in three months ago at $1.70 a ton, today's price at $2.50 makes corn a cheaper deal. Um, if you need to add processing onto the corn, add another whatever it costs to add processing, 10 20 30 40 a ton, and then I'll change that math. Please do the math at home accordingly. Maybe by the time you have to have the corn ground or processed, it might be cheaper than wheat mids. On the other hand, if you do it on farm, you don't have transportation costs put in place, corn might be cheaper. Distiller's grains is something you just can't ignore. Ethanol plants produce a great product for cattle, and that's distiller's grains, whether it be wet or dry. Let's look at the dry price here at $255 a ton, is what the quote is out of Blue Flint today. Cost per pound is basically the same as corn. So here you get a great energy feed, but you also get a protein feed too, this 26% protein. So in reality, you're getting the energy for the corn price, and you're getting protein for free. It really works in figure transportation to costs on top of that, but you can see why a lot of feed yards have gone to using distiller's grains. Matter of fact, a one-time distiller's grains used to be priced at about 90% the value of corn. I see today it priced at about 110% the value of corn. So they're asking more for it too since there's a dearth of feed needed out there in the area, out there in the nation. Here's one for energy, for hay cost, just energy and hay. Round bales around here are trying to be priced at $50 for a 1,200-pound bale, 48% TDN. Some of the CRP hay that was put out is that's kind of the upper end. I did find one at 50 once. Um, you do the math and you come down with 10 cents per pound of TDN. So that is cheaper than corn. However, you can't get enough feed into calves to make them gain. We'll talk about that a little later. Corn stover. A lot of that's being put up right now. Um, our seascape, our landscape up here looks more like my home back home in Iowa with all the corn that were piling around the area. And you can see the cost of energy for corn stover is about five cents. Really a low cost feed when you look at pricing it $30 a, ton, uh, a round bale. Now there's some issues that comes to how much value there is in corn stover as a fertilizer left on the field. So that needs to be discussed not by me but by a fertilizer person because there is some value in in the corn stove remaining out in the field lots of different ways to look at that number um, so when it comes down to corn stover it's really cheap it's low cost feed it's great for bedding but it does have a cost on the other hand maybe you guys should look at that as a part of your cow feed ration rather than your calf feed ration just because of the way the cost is now, if you're looking at average daily gain in calves, let's try to think through this one. As you increase the average daily gain, you need to increase the TDN of the ration. If you want a half a pound, 52 TDN, which is better than that prairie hay that we're looking at. Um, as you increase the rate of gain, you have to increase the TDN value. It just increases it substantially. Next to the TDN is the corresponding NEG, net energy for gain value. So some feed yards are saying, yeah, we're going to feed our calves at a 0.49 NEG. What's that mean? That means around a 72 TDN ration that should give around three pounds a day. If you want a 0.38 TDN, I mean NEG ration, it's around a 64 TDN, two pounds a day. Okay. That's kind of where you go to from those. That's a sheet you can look at. North Dakota produces an immense amount of processed feeds out here. It's just almost amazing how many, uh, how much production we have out here. However, if you start, if you're in an area close to any of these lo stars or locations, um, you need to really think hard about trying to get feed out of them because transportation costs really bite into hauling those across the state. Uh, the other problem we have this year is availability of feeds. Um, I've had mixed signals on whether feeds are available. Um, one will say that we've got feed available for you next week. Others will say, you know, in reality, we're not getting our supplies that we need, so it might be two months out. It's uh, a really frustrating time. If you think you need distiller's grains in about two weeks, you should have probably looked at it about two weeks ago to try to make sure you get it just so you get it, schedule it in. Because a lot of this stuff is going out of state, whether it's in semi or rail car, because the rest of the nation needs feed too. And we've had a lot of it.
So um, the next slide really shows how many different distillers grains that are out there processing plants, wheat mid plants, barley malt sprout. Uh, we got a, a wet corn milling plant in the state, potato byproducts, beet tailings, beet pulp, my golly. You know, that's a great feed. Just remember you're hauling a lot of water when you're doing it. And even when you'd figure that in, um, it's still pretty reasonably priced when you're looking at $200 plus a ton corn. It actually does fit in. Um, that's another discussion. Again, distiller's grains, just got to remind you, it has both energy and protein. Uh, you should limit it to no more than 30% on a dry matter basis when you're kind of feeding these calves up. They love the taste and flavor of distillers grains. You might end up with some sulfur toxicity, which, like, which looks like polio problems, polioencephalitis problems, um, if it's fed at higher levels. If you're feeding a high roughage ration, maybe your intake could be higher than that, but you need to just watch out for those issues. A word on good management, feeding calves, teaching them how to eat. You can really screw up a group of calves if you don't do that right. If you do it right, they can respond and gain exceptionally well, no matter how you feed them, whether you feed them a feed bunk in a bucket or if you use a mixer wagon and, and go that route. Um, the next few slides are, are rations and associated average daily gains. This is be for 575 weight calves. The next one is for 660 weight calves. And the next one after that, I believe, is 750. Now, on all these slides, I went through them rather quick, but if um, basically what they show is that as the calf gets bigger, they can consume more feed, and if you keep them on the same type of energy ration, they'll actually pick up their performance a little bit as they get bigger. As animals get, cattle get bigger, they can consume more, they can utilize poorer quality feeds better. So my message there is, if you got a young calf, you really need to develop a good ration to keep them growing. Otherwise, you will, they won't perform as well. Once you're past that six, seven weight, well, that's what we're doing. We're trying to feed them up there. But if you're below that 600-pound calf, you really need a better ration than if you're above a 600-pound calf. Getting them on feed the right way goes a long way. Now, the next few rations, are, uh, our slides have some more rations in them that are just an array of different things. I believe this will be held on our website it's at, when we get this, so you can review this at another time. There is a handouts that your county agent might have or we have in the room if you had the opportunity to print those off. Apologies if you didn't have the access to them right away. Um, but they are available and you can look through them. Basically, as you increase the energy content, you increase the average daily gain of the cattle. And I've got another sheet here that I've done. And feed costs at $1.75 would be like $150 a ton using some of the feeds we used. If you're doing three and a quarter pounds a day gain, it's $195 a ton for that type of feed. If you're looking at two and a half pounds a gain, it's $177 a ton. Let me put it this way. Your feed cost per pound a gain is from 80 cents to, to 70 cents. And as you decrease, as you increase the gain, your cost of putting on the gain decreases. As you use more energy, the cost of putting on the gain actually decreases. So um, there's other things to think about, and that is don't forget an ionophore. Um, ionophores, and that's spelled incorrectly there, work really well. Uh, they do improve feed efficiency. Uh, their bovitac and rumensin are two of our biggest ionophores. There is some coccidiosis con control in those, but if you have the opportunity to use it, I encourage you to unless you're doing natural programs. Implants, they also increase average daily gain, and if you're uh, uh, not keeping heifers for replacements, um, there's an opportunity there too. Coccidiosis, of course, please manage that. And uh, feed additives are bedequinate or Corid, uh, decox or Corid. Um, certainly uh, can control coccidiosis. And if you've ever dealt with coccidiosis, you'll do anything to prevent coccidiosis from having happening. So um, feed prices, uh, I think they're relative to the corn price. Uh, younger animals have better feed efficiency, so if you're going to develop a ration and get these calves going, spend some extra money for a better ration to get these calves up and going. And as your energy density increases, the feed efficiency is increased. And when you're background in calves, the advantage really does go to grain, and it still happens. Even though the price of corn stover is, a, is five cents and hay's cheaper, but when you're looking at putting gain on, it keeps going to grain feed. So with that. Um, I think I'll stop and ask the next person to start up unless there's a question. I don't really have a question, but I have a statement. We have a statement here at Carrington. Yeah, one thing I've noticed is that if the higher the corn prices, 
it forces you to become more efficient. You yeah. Know, it does. That's a good point. Um, appreciate that. The statement was, as corn prices get higher, it forces you to think about becoming more efficient in what you're doing. Our next speaker is going to be John Dubetter out of Carl? Maryland. Yes, Carl. Al. Uh, we have a question here at Lamar. He can, he can hear you. Well, yes, I can hear you. Oh, yes, what I'm wondering is if you're grinding hay for your ration on uh, five, six weight steers, and you're you're you have alfalfa as your crop and also corn stover. I mean, that's what I'm doing, and I notice. I mean, they do well on it. But what's the what's the uh, ratio of one alfalfa or two alfalfa bales to one, or what? What's your research saying? Again, it comes back to that target that you're looking for for average daily gain, and if you're um, i got to hit the right number here. And if you're looking for, if you want better gain, you're going to have to include more alfalfa. Um, if you're adding a lot of grain in the ration, one to one would probably be okay. It comes back to alfalfa works well because it's a protein source. If you're backgrounding heifers, it becomes another issue. Um, if you're just feeding hay, I'd actually do two to one, two alfalfas to one corn stover. And they're not going to perform. Well, it all depends how good your alfalfa hay works. That's my thumb rule. So, I, well, I'm, I've got grain in there too. I mean, it's oats that's going in there, given the price of corn. I can buy oats a lot cheaper or raise it a lot cheaper. So that's what I'm doing is roughly two alfalfa bales to one corn stover plus plus oats. Yeah. Um, that could work very well. What I'd suggest is let's uh, look at the ration at some point if you want to connect with me or Al, and uh, we can certainly evaluate that and see if what's going is meeting your uh, gain expectations for the cattle. Okay. Be more than happy to do that, go through a ration. Um, our next speaker is going to be John Duvetter out of Minot, and uh, John is going to speak to us on systems and budgets for backgrounding calves. John, I see your slide. I take it you're ready. Carl, can we ask one more question? Well, sure. <laughs> yes, Crystal. And your question is? Energy source. Why don't you use uh, barley? I mean, and, and uh, what at what uh, percentage of the corn price would you use to compare barley with? Put it on a ton basis and use 80% to 90% the value of corn. Yeah, That's this is Tim. Yeah. We were just looking at that with some producers, and barley is about $5, and so that equates to about 588 corn. So, yeah, if you've got barley and can feed it, that would be a good alternative, I would think. Right, Carl? I certainly agree with that, Tim. The challenge I have up here, I stopped at, the, at an elevator nearby and said, oh, you got any feed barley for sale? Absolutely not. So if you have access to it, it's it's right on. Good job. Yeah, there really isn't a feed barley price. It's all malting barley, but the maltster's got all they have now. So you can, you know, the barley is kind of barley. And the numbers I've seen, about $5 a bushel. That's to buy it. But you're right, Carl, you go in there and want to buy it, maybe they don't have it. It's whatever's available. It all feeds well. <laughs> 